Good afternoon, and thank you again uh, for joining. And uh, we will talk today about a process called third party process. Okay. So it's called um, third party process or drop ship process. Okay. So that is the process we will be talking today. And uh, now what is the third party process and what is the drop ship process? That is the process we will discuss. So So let's go back this overview. So this is what the process happens. So this is me. So let us assume this is me and the name of my company is Nike. Nike makes shoes. The Nike's customer is Walmart. Nike's customer is Target. So target place an order to Nike. So Nike get in a purchase order from their customer. In this case, for example, <clears throat> we have a customer called JCPenney, Nike, whatever. And that is where this uh, order comes. Right. Now, when I get an order, so I'm Nike, when I get an order, I don't manufacture, then I send that order to my customer, uh, to my supplier in, or manufacturer in the China. So my manufacturer is in China, and in the China, I produce and I send that material. So, and then in this process, what happens is, my vendor supply the material directly to customer. So this is a dropship process. So in this process, what happens is, that um, I get, uh, we get uh, order from our customer. Say I have a customer called Walmart. So Walmart place an order to me. And uh, from that customer Walmart, We can also and then we place order to our customer in China and customer in China supply the material apply the material to my customer Walmart. And material never come to us. Material does not come to us. So metal never come to us. We don't deliver the material and uh, it never hit our inventory. Okay. So that is what the third party process in the dropship process is coming to the picture. Now, how do we do that? So if let us say I want to <clears throat> do that end-to-end um, -end third party process in SAP. So if I want to do end-to-end -end third party process in SAP, so this process goes between sales and purchasing both. So it's a cross process between sales and purchase both. So here we need a material. So in the material, we need a specific item category group. So 
we need item category group. Then uh, we create a sales order. That is the transaction code uh, <clears throat> VA01. In the sales order, we have a so there is an item category, and that item category in a standard SAP is called TS. This item category TS should be there in the sales document. Okay. So when we create a sales order, okay. that is what we did. Then purchase requisition PR get created automatically. So PR get created automatically from sales order. Okay. Then we can verify purchase requisition that now we are in MM and then uh, we, which you can do with the purchase ME 21N or ME 53N. Then we can create PO with the reference to PR transaction code ME21N. We can create a statistical good receipt. This good receipt is a statistical because it's not a real good receipt. A statistical good receipt transaction code. Migo. Then we can create vendor invoice, and then that vendor invoice is the transaction code Miro. <clears throat> okay. so that is a transaction code Miro. So that also we can do. After the Miro, then the next step which we do or we can do is create customer invoice. We have zero one. Okay. With reference to sales on. With reference to sales order so this is the whole end-to-end -end process okay okay so let's do that so now we log into sap and uh, i have a material uh, let me verify so we have a material which I have created and um, <clears throat> so in this material I think this is the one it is okay so this is the material so in this material we hit enter so in this material we should have a sales view we should also have a purchasing view. So we should have a both views. The reason for that is because this process is between sales and purchase both. Therefore, in this material, you should have a basic data, sales of one, sales of two, sales and plan data, purchasing, storage one, and accounting one. Then we hit enter. Plant 1000, which is standard, store location 001, which is a standard, and then uh, we have a sales organization thousand which is standard and distribution channel 10 which is standard then we hit enter it's a regular material and uh, one thing which is different in this material is this item category group bonds this item category group bonds should be there in the material master this is important 
So in the material group, we should have item category group equals to bars. This item category group makes this as a third party uh, material or dropship material. So the, that is the important. So this should be there. And uh, in this material, we should have a sales and purchasing both views. Okay. And we go back. We go back. Okay. So now we create a material. Now after creating material, we create a sales order. The sales order is a regular sales order. We have been creating transaction code VA01. So VA01. We put an order type OR 1010 hit enter. We can choose a customer. So it could be any standard customer, doesn't make a difference. So it doesn't necessarily need to be any specific uh, customer. So customer could be any customer as we want. Okay. So the customer, we can enter the material. Oops. Uh, copy it a lot of junk. Let me exit. Scroll zero one. We enter the material here and this is the material. So material and then we enter the quantity, say 10 pieces. Okay. Checking ATP, we don't have it. So we say continue. Okay. Now another thing important is that item category in the sales order should be TAS. So TAS is the item category for third party order. So this item category is important. So that is why I put it here. So item category should be TAS. So this is important. Item category group in the material master should be bands. That is important. Okay. Now, if you go back and then we can save it. You can set it. See the message in the bottom? A standard order 25408 has been set. We can make a note of uh, sales order. So this is uh, my standard sales order. And then I can make it here. I can create my sales order. So you can create our standard sales order. So this is VA01 and this is, we can create a sales order. Now in this sales order, I want to go back and verify. If I go to sales order here, if I double click on the line item, and if I go to a schedule line, correct? Then here I have a purchase requisition. This purchase requisition got created automatically because system knows this is a dropship sales order. Therefore, purchase requisition directly get created from here. So this is the purchase requisition which has been created. So we can make a note of that. So this is the purchase requisition. Now I want I can go back and verify this purchase requisition. So with this the purchase requisition got created. I exit out, I exit out, exit out. Now I go to materials management. We get purchasing. And then we have a purchase requisition here. Okay. So purchase requisition here is 986. So I can open in a Purchase requisition here. This is my purchase requisition 986. So this is the purchase requisition 986, which has come up here. Okay. 
So here we have a partial acquisition. So this is my partial acquisition here. In this partial acquisition, I have a material and entire thing get copied. If I go to delivery address, here I see the customer number also. The system knows that this is the material to be delivered on this. Now here, if you look at the line item, there's item category here also, and there's item category S. And this item category S tells me that this is a third party order. So there's item category S. So there's an item category S here. So in purchase acquisition, we can verify we can verify item category equals to s okay so that item category is there in the sales order now we go back we go back here and we create a sales order so now we come we got a purchase requisition now with the purchase requisition we want to create a purchase order so my uh, purchase requisition 986 is here 986 is here and i select that and I hit adopt button. So when I hit adopt, it will create convert PR into PO. So all my things, vendor also came because I have already defined a vendor for this. I have a material, I have a quantity, 10 pieces. I can put the, there's a price also. And then we create a material. And again, here there's an item category S. This item category S make this purchase order a third party or so here also in the purchase order there is a item category item category equals to s so there is item category equals to s so there is item category s Now, after that, we go back um, to delivery tab. If you see that there is no guru seat here because system knows I want to create a guru seat. I save it. So PO got created. 1077. I go back to the PO. I make a note of the PO. This is my PO number. And this is my PO number. So we got it. We got created a PO. Now, after creating a PO, I want to create a statistical, a statistical guru seat. Okay. And in statistical guru seat, we have a transaction code MIGO. Okay. So we go back from here, back. And then we go back and we put it MIGO. So we go to MIGO, we put in MIGO. Then we go to Guru Seat, create a purchase order. We hit enter. Okay. So here we have a material. So this is my third party material. We have a quantity 10 pieces. Where, and this, uh, this is my moment type 101. Purchase order number comes up here item category third party partner gives me the vendor it is buying the material it also gives my customer because the system knows which customer it is okay. so the customer number and vendor number both appears here we have an account assignment i hit item okay i hit check We got a message in the bottom document is okay and then we hit post and we save it so material document 209 has been saved okay now i want to go back 
and check this material document so i want to go to inventory i want to go to uh, check the material document mb03 mb02 this is material document and now this material document tells me that on this date by this user this quantity this material has arrived and uh, if i go back to accounting document so there is a accounting document which is system hits my cost of goods sold okay so we see that here it update my cost of goods sold now why cost of goods sold because this is not my inventory it is not coming to warehouse so it is directly going to cost of goods sold because that is my cost what is my purchase price that is my cost of this material so it directly go to cost of goods sold okay now i have this material 14604 uh, so material is 14604 so we go back go back now if i want to go back to mmbe if i go to mmbe if i put my material here if i hit execute here if you see there is no stock although i did a good receipt but there is no stock so so purpose that is why it is called a statistical good receipt so we have this is a, a statistical good receipt so we see that here two things when we do a statistical good receipt it it uh, update my it update my cost of goods sold because this is my cost of the item it doesn't update my inventory account because material is not coming in so not inventory account okay so it update cost of goods sold not inventory account inventory account doesn't get updated here and then second thing is that inventory stock does not get updated the system does not update inventory stock so that is another thing which system does so it does not update inventory stock So that is what another thing we have. So now inventory doesn't get updated because material is not coming in basically. So because material is not coming in, so it does not update my inventory. I want to do my uh, customer uh, vendor invoice, transaction code Miro. So we exit out, exit, and uh, we close all that, close all that. And uh, we want to do uh, invoice verification because we need to pay to the builder, the supplier of the material. We go to document entry, the same Migo. Enter the document date. Enter the amount. Enter the PO, purchase order number. Balance zero. And uh, then we save it. Hit enter. So you see the message in the bottom, document number 510-560-9197 has been created. So we created a accounting document. So we go back, 
So we exit out. Now we go back to the next step. We have uh, supplied the material, we pay to the vendor. Now we create a customer invoice with reference to sales order transaction code VF01. So now I want to go back to the sales module, SD module, and I want to create a customer invoice. If a product has been delivered to the customer, this is my sales order, hit enter. And then we hit save. Okay, so we are able to create my document. I go back. If I see my sales order, this is my sales order. And in the sales order, if I see my doc flow, so this is what we created. This was my uh, sales order. We create a in purchase order and then we create it. Now for the purchase order, if I want to go back and create my display my document, then I can go back to the purchase order. If I go to purchase order, I it open purchase order. In the purchase order, also I can check the status. This is the status here. Order 100 delivered 100 invoice. Uh, sorry, 10, 10, 10. So entire quantity has been invoiced if i go back to the item detail if i go back to the item detail if i go to purchase order history so in the purchase order history we have good receipt which you did it was a statistical good receipt because material is already delivered to the customer so it's not an actual good receipt and then we did a invoice receipt on purchase side and on sales side we create a custom invoice okay so this was our end-to-end -end purchase cycle how do we do uh, purchase and sales cycle for third-party process okay thank you